can you sense the alarm you see i want to share a story with you i just got back from las vegas nevada powerful time powerful move of the spirit god moved deliverance broke out salvation took place healings took place it was such a beautiful beautiful time in the lord god really showed out so i remember i was in the hotel and i was taking a nap and i remember it was it was nice beautiful day and i went to my hotel and i began to take a nap uh before uh the service you know, we had an evening service and before that i was taking a nap and as i was taking a nap i woke up to this loud alarm off in the building and uh as i'm sleeping i'm waking up and this alarm is going crazy in this hotel and i'm thinking my goodness what is going on i woke up to this alarm i woke up uh to you know just this loud alarm just going off in the hotel room and i'm thinking oh my goodness what is going on so i go out of the room uh, but before I go out of the room, I get my money, my shoes on, my stuff that's very, very valuable to me. I put it in my pocket and I go outside of the room. And uh, I'm looking around. Nobody's running. Nobody's going crazy. And I'm thinking, man, this is weird. What's really going on? And I'm thinking, you know, we've heard stories in the past. You know, things can be a little crazy out there. Uh, I've heard of, you know, maybe there's a fire. Uh, I had no idea what was going on. And so uh, the alarm is, is going off and I'm looking at the maids and I'm asking, do you know what's going on? Is there a fire? Is there anything crazy going on? And they were even sure what was going on. Um, so I said, okay, so I go back into my room and I begin to grab a little more things and I go back out and I run to the, the end of the hallway to see, well, you know, let me, you know, make sure that everything's good because I'm not going to be stuck here if something bad is going crazy. And so uh, sure enough, you know, they were on it right away. The maintenance showed up, the fire department showed up and, you know, they quickly did what they needed to do. And they eventually they said it was a faulty alarm that went off. And I said, oh my goodness, they woke me from my slumber. I was having such a good nap. I, I felt good. It was such a good nap. But, uh, you know, I, I was just awake. I couldn't even go to sleep. I was shaken up because I'm like, oh my goodness, how do you wake up to that? But I said, well, praise God. I go back into the room and I begin to pray. And I began to talk to the Lord. And as I began to talk to the Lord, I heard the Lord say this. He said, can you sense the alarm? And he said, there's many people, spiritually speaking, they have an alarm that's going off in their life. And people all around them can see it. But oftentimes, they can't sense it. Many people have an alarm going off spiritually. And they can't even hear it. People sometimes can see it, they can hear it, they may even tell you, hey, there's something going on in your life. They can see it all around you, they can see what's going on, they see the dirt, they see the mess. But when that alarm is going off, do you sense it? Do you listen when people begin to point it out? Do you listen and do you take care of it? Do you do what needs to be done or do you brush it off as if it's not important see the bible says in james chapter 1 verse 23 for if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it he is like a man who looks very carefully at his natural face in a mirror for once he has looked at himself and gone away he immediately forgets what he looks like you may hear about the problem you may see the problem but when you walk away and forget about everything that was brought to your attention, it's like a person that looked themselves in the mirror and walked away and forgot how they looked. Do you sense the alarm? Do you see what's going on? When people bring it to your attention, like this is going on, do you automatically fix what's going on or do you brush it off do you pick it up in the spirit do you see it in the spirit or do you brush it off god wants us to be in a place where we can not only hear him but that we can sense the alarm
You see, the devil just might be prowling. The devil just might be trying to trip you up. The devil just might be trying to make you lose your mind. The alarm has been set. But do you sense the alarm? Do you see the red flags? My goodness, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. We all have things going off in our lives, whether it be spiritually speaking or physically. But when those things are going off in your life, do you fix it? When those things are going off in your life, do you immediately consecrate and call out to your Father who is in heaven? Or do you brush it off and say, ah, I'll take care of it when it needs to be done. Ah, uh, I'll get to it when I get to it. But what if you was just to get to it at that moment? The deliverance you may receive, the healing that you may receive. The salvation that you may see in your family. God is speaking, but are you listening? People sometimes they get mad at God and they wonder, God, why am I in this situation? They get mad at God as if it's God's fault. God, why did you put me here? God, why am I in this situation? Why am I in this rut? Why am I in this pit? Can I tell you something? It was never God that put you in there. It was you. Because if you was just to hearken to the voice of the Holy Spirit, if you would have just listened to the alarm, my goodness, if you was just to see the red flags, maybe you wouldn't have been in that place in the first place. Are you listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Sometimes people say, I can't hear God. I can't hear. I can't sense the Holy Spirit. Has He left me? It's not that He left you. Anytime you are disobedient and you ignore the Holy Spirit, it pushes you further from the Lord. It's not that He moves. It's not that He left you. It's not that He's distant. What happens is, whenever we don't listen or hearken to the voice of the Holy Spirit, we take a step back and it gets harder to hear Him. You might be saying, well, how can I hear Him? You might be on a couch, you might be watching a movie, and the Holy Spirit will begin to tug at your heart. You might be feeling, I need to pray. Now I, I need to get into worship. Worship. I, I, I need to, I have this urge to get in the Word and read the Word then read the word because at that moment the Holy Spirit wants to bring something to your attention the Holy Spirit wants to reveal himself to you God wants to reveal situations to you that nobody around you may not see or sense or even catch the Holy Spirit wants to bring to your attention the things that are happening in the Spirit. God wants to warn you of the lies and the tactics of the enemy. You might be going crazy in your mind right now and saying, Why am I going through this mind battle? Why am I going through this situation? Well, have you checked with God? Have you been in the presence of the Holy Spirit? Have you been in a place where you've been consecrated in the Lord and it's just you and Him and you begin to worship? Because let me tell you something, when you are in a place of worship, God will begin to reveal Himself to you in such a way where it is where it is in a where, where you won't even deny the power of the Holy Spirit. He'll make Himself so real to you that you can't deny that the Holy Spirit is not present. You wonder why you're in this place, this pit where you can't hear God. You wonder why you're, you're questioning, saying, God, why am I in this place? The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. Sometimes we need to humble ourselves before the Lord. When's the last time you got into the prayer room? When's the last time you got in that place of worship where it's just you and Jesus? When's the last time you just said, Lord, I'm going to give you an hour of my time and I'm just going to begin to worship you. I'm just going to begin to give you glory because the Bible even says, Jesus told his disciples, can you not keep watch for at least one hour? 
when's the last time you said, Lord, I lay myself down? Oftentimes when I get in the secret place, I say, Lord, I empty myself out to you that I may be filled with your Holy Spirit again. Lord, I empty myself out. I want none of myself. I just want more of you. Even as I'm saying that now, I feel the Holy Spirit. When you empty yourself out, you could be filled. But God can't feel anything that's already been filled. God can't fill you if you're full of yourself. He can only fill that which is full of His Spirit. Sometimes we need to humble ourselves and know that God is the only one that can remove the situation, restore the situation, or even bless that situation. Can you sense the alarm going off? Can you sense it going off in your life? That alarm might be telling you that you need to pray more. That alarm might be telling you and saying that it's time to fast again. That alarm that's going off might be saying the people that is in your inner circle is not of God. You need to break away from it. That, that alarm might be going off. The Holy Spirit might be tugging at you and even telling other people that are leaders. And they've even came to you and said, listen, that relationship that you're in is not of God. When will you listen to the alarm? When will you see the red flags? When will you act on it? When you continue to ignore the signs and the alarms, it, get our, it gets ourselves in a place where we no longer hear God. I want to read a, a familiar scripture in 1 Samuel 15 verse 3. It says, now go and completely destroy. Now this is when the prophet uh, was telling uh, King Saul at the time that he had a job to do. So in 1 Samuel 15, 3, it says, now go and completely destroy the entire Amalek nation, men, women, and children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. Let's jump down to verse 17. And Samuel told him, Although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader of the tribe of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and told you, Go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, until they are all dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil? in the Lord's sight. Saul was rejected as king because he didn't listen to the directions that was first given to him. He thought in his own mind, I could do this and this, but save this. But God says, I want everything to be killed. I want everything to be taken out. But for him, it was selfish gain. You might be having something in your life that God says, I want this, this, and this. And you've given him part of it, but you're still holding on to that one thing. And God says, unless you give it unto me, you'll still be disobedient. God says, be obedient. Even the Bible says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. When we disobey God, it's a form of witchcraft. Don't be like Saul. Listen to the Lord. Hear the alarm. See the flags. Maybe you can't see or hear the alarm. You might be asking, what must I do? You know, I encourage people that feel as if they can't hear the Holy Spirit. They can't sense the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to fast for three days. You see, when we fast for three days, we're emptying ourselves to the Lord. And we're saying, God... I give this to you. I give my body to you, God. I empty myself out to you. And Lord, I'm serious that I want to hear you. I'm serious that I want a connection with you. I'm serious that I want to be close to you again. You see, oftentimes people say, I want more of God. I want more of the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit actually wants more of you. 
The Lord actually desires to be close to you. He desires to have you in his arm. He desires to be close to you, even in the secret place. So when you begin to fast, when you begin to give yourself to the Lord, the Lord begins to smile and he says, Ah, I receive you. We must get in the will of God. Maybe you have things going on in your life and maybe there's some red flags. Maybe there's an alarm going off spiritually speaking. I want to pray with you. I want you right now to examine your heart and maybe these things are going off in your life. I want you to pray with me. My Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I empty myself out to you that I may be filled with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you begin to reveal to them the alarm, the red flags. And Lord, I pray that you begin to show them right now, God, what it is that the devil may be trying to do on behind their back. Lord, I pray if they find themselves in a tough situation, in a pit, Lord, I pray that you begin to reveal what it is to them in the name of Jesus now. If you're in sin, you must repent of it. There might be an alarm going off because you're in sin. There might be some red flags because of the sin. Repent of it. The Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins. I don't care what sin you might have done. But if you're in sin and you're continually in sin, I want you to repent of that right now. The moment you begin to repent, that's when God will begin to fill you. That's when God will begin to heal you. That's when God will begin to bring deliverance. Repent right now of that sin. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for that one that is watching and God, I pray that you would touch them by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that this message, God, will bring an awareness, my goodness. And God, I pray that this word, God, God will begin to show them, my Shabbat, God, that they need you in the name of Jesus now. God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time, oh God. And Lord, I pray for that one that is watching. God, that you begin to move by your Holy Spirit now. God, we thank you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this message. We thank you for this word right now in the name of Jesus. For those who would like to give to the ministry, you can give through Cash App, which is Dollar Sign Sanchez Ministries, or you can go to our website, SergioSanchezMinistries.com, or maybe you want to give by Venmo. It's also at Sergio Sanchez Ministries. So I love you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. I pray that this message was a blessing to you guys. You continue to stay close to Jesus. If you would like to become a monthly supporter, you can go to our website. And when you become a monthly supporter of $15 or more, you get a free copy of my book, signed and shipped to you. So if you would like to become a monthly supporter, go to our website, SergioSanctionsMinistries.com, sign up, become a monthly supporter, and you'll get a free book. Or maybe you can't become a monthly supporter, but you'd like to give one time. You can give one time on, there, on the website or through Cash App, and I pray that God blesses you for that. And I pray that God keeps you in perfect peace and perfect health and that you continue to stay focused on Jesus. And like I always say, guys, God can make the impossible possible on your behalf today. God bless you.